how, how do you want to do this? You want me to? Uh, uh, this is to, uh, Ron Kovic. Yes. Tom Kovic. Kovic. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise, Oliver Stone, Alex Ho. Uh, Mr. Stone will uh, moderate up here and call for questions. Thank you all very much for coming. And uh, first question. No. I'm sorry. Tell tell what tell you what? Why we're in Dallas? What's going on? Uh, yeah. Well, we're making Born on the Fourth of July, uh, which is based on a book by Ron, his life story. Uh, we're starting shooting on October 12th. We'll be shooting in Dallas from October through uh, Christmas, in, um, until Christmas. It is our main location. It is standing in for Long Island, Massapequa, Long Island. It's also standing in for uh, Miami and uh, Syracuse and various other places on the East Coast. Uh, as you know, I've shot here before. This year I shot talk radio here and had a very successful experience. So I'm probably an old face to some of you here. but. Uh, we thought you'd like to get a chance to talk to Ron and to Tom and uh, any other questions. What is it about the, the Dallas and Oak Cliff area that attracted you to pick it for so many diverse locations? A combination of reasons. Uh, I mean, the look is close to Long Island in many ways. There's also, uh, Dallas is built in a sort of a structure where there's a very modern inner city and it seems like there are ri archeological rings of time around it, like there's a 60s and then there's a 50s look there's even a 40s look if you can go far, far enough out. So we, we found every single aspect of every era that we have wanted here. Additionally, I, I like the sky here. I like the clouds. Uh, I love the, uh, the talent pool. It's been excellent. Uh, we, we, found, uh, we have a lot of actors from Dallas in the movie, not, not only with speaking roles, featured roles. Uh, we've gotten good cooperations. We sort of find a, an exuberant sort of personality to the town. We, we, in a sense, everybody's an actor here. Uh, so we've had very good luck uh, fishing uh, for talent. The cost factor is, is important to us. Uh, I think we're saving approximately three to four million dollars by shooting in Texas rather than shooting in Long Island. Uh, a very healthy labor climate. So. It's approximately, uh, we're still uh, arguing a bit with the, with the, with the financing entity, but it's, uh, it's approximately $15 million. Uh, Tom, what brought you to this film? Uh, Oliver did, actually, a couple of years ago. Uh, I'd met him, we'd been wanting to work together, and he gave me this script and uh, said, are you interested? I read about 15 pages, and I called him, I said, let's do it. I mean, it's it's a very complex role uh, and a challenging role. Yes. Stone, uh, you mentioned shooting in Dallas. Would you have Tarrant County, Fort Worth locations in the, in the project? Yeah, we have Fort Worth locations. We also uh, we have uh, Garland, mm -hmm. Denton. Uh, I guess you're, you're all, they're all divided into little townships like in Los Angeles, but we're all over the place, yeah. And in fact, we're going. To, we're even shooting parts of Georgia here, uh, way out in, in a place called Venus, Texas, which uh, is an incredible little town. Ron, what are you doing to help Tom prepare for the world living every day? I live in uh, Redondo Beach, California, and uh, Tom and I have been working together. Uh, uh, we uh, how long ago? Six, six or seven months uh, ago, we got together for the first time. Um, uh, just recently, Tom and I were working along the ocean in California, both in wheelchairs. We spent several hours together. Um, real hard work. Uh, Tommy, uh, Tom is real terrific. He's working very hard. Um, it is a difficult role. Um, I'm very pleased with the uh, progress that Tom has made. How faithful will this be to your group? Well, that house over there. Uh -huh. um, I came. Uh, I came into town Sunday from Los Angeles, and um, I came down to the set on Monday. And that is 
an amazing replica of, uh, of the house that I grew up in. They've done a very good job. Um, I'm very touched. I went into the house. It reminds me uh, of the house that I grew up in as a boy. I just went down the hall this morning and into the room that was my room as a boy. Uh, they've done a real fine job. Um, we're, as I said, working very hard each day. Uh, we're going to do our very best. And I'm very pleased, very pleased with, uh, with the uh, different sets and the different locations. And uh, I'm very happy to be here, very, very happy. This means a lot to me. Uh, in some ways, it's much easier, actually, because when I'm having a problem with the scene, you know, uh, yesterday we were working in the hospital, and uh, you know, I just call Ron up or go to Ron and say, listen, what would you do? <laughs> uh, uh, so in that sense, uh, you know, I mean, the, the rules are kind of set from the beginning. It's not easy. Um, in many ways, yesterday, uh, I was going back to something that had been very painful in my life when I had first come home from Vietnam, a very difficult place, um, a little deja vu. But it, I felt strong yesterday, and I felt, uh, I felt a feeling of fulfillment that this was the right place to be and that we were doing the right thing. And I left uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, rather than feeling depressed, I left feeling very alive, very alive. So yesterday was a very good experience for me, and this entire experience so far has been a very positive and healing experience for me as a person. And it has been, uh, it's been a real pleasure to work with Oliver Stone and Tom Cruise. Um, it's a very important time in my life right now. We want to tell the truth to the American people. We want them to know what really happened there. And we want them to know what happened when we came home. I was really born on the 4th of July in 1946. I celebrated my 42nd birthday this 4th of July. This is simply the story of a young man who grew up in this country went to Vietnam and came back home. We want those young people to know what happened. So what happened to my generation never happens again, never again. To what? To what? Keeping your edge, yeah. To, to, to keep working. Keep working and you get better and I, I, th I think I'm in a, in a place where this is, my, I think, my fifth film or sixth, and I, I feel like I'm learning uh, a tremendous amount as I go each time. I think I learned a lot on talk radio. So uh, Born is probably the biggest single film I've shot in terms of locations and size and period. I, we have to deal with 20 years here, 20 years of time. It's a lot of layers and a lot of speaking roles. There's 160 speaking roles. This is a big film. And uh, in some ways, it's also a very confining film because the central character is confined to a wheelchair for much of the film. So we have those problems and, and that challenge to deal with. And uh, I believe in keeping working. <laughs> Sounds like a banality, but it's true. Uh, Ed Johnson is here. He's from Dallas. so. How many people would you say are from Dallas in the... Uh, so far, Texas Cash is down to 104 speaking and research roles. That's not counting the Texas. Oh, already cast and there's still some to see. I believe there's some to still be cast. Just a few. Just a few. Why, you want one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the newscasters. Economics. <laughs> it's just... Uh, um, it's, it gives us more freedom to do what we need to do. And we don't have to restore the place because it's a, it's a plain, simple warehouse. And it gives us flexibility. 
simple as that. No, I, I, I first worked with Rod in 1977-8, and we wrote, the, we wrote the screenplay in 78. Uh, it was going to be directed by, uh, there were two other directors involved, uh, and Al Pacino was going to star, actually, and we came right down to the wire. We, it was then a $6 million movie, believe it or not, and that was considered too much for this film, because it was always considered un uh, uncommercial, and the money uh, fell, out, fell apart. Uh, it, it was a strange film, a co-production between Germany and in the Bahamas, Bahamas Money and, <laughs> and Orion Pictures. And three days before we were supposed to shoot, after we'd rehearsed the whole thing, uh, the, the financing fell out and Pacino went on to do another film. And uh, it was very heartbreaking for Ron and for me. And uh, we forgot about it. We put it on the shelf and it went into the attic. And uh, it's ironic that t it t 10 years later, uh, Tom Cruise read it and uh, felt strongly about it, and he brought, he's largely responsible for bringing it back to life. In part, also, uh, I mean, obviously after Platoon, I was given somewhat of a license to do a sort of a sequel-type film to Platoon, and I was playing around with another idea of, about my own return home to America. And I thought Ron's story, in, it was a much larger story and, and a greater story than any specific story about myself or, or any other vet. It, in his story, I, I think I find the sort of the bookend to Platoon, the, the return home uh, the, that I wanted to complete that, that idea that I started with on Platoon. I think... Uh, I knew him before. Yes, I'd met Oliver uh, a couple of times before and, you know, expressed interest in working with him and, uh, and we just sat down actually we had dinner a couple of times and talked on the phone and he sent me the script. This is really a change of pace for you. Please. I, you know, every film I was looking for a, a progression uh, as an actor something that's really going to challenge me and uh, I feel you know it's one of the most important films I've ever done uh, certainly and certainly one of the most complex, just uh, physically and emotionally. I beg your pardon? How do you plan to psych yourself up to get ready for some emotional thing? I, uh, I mean, I, I don't understand what you mean, how do I psych myself up? I mean, are some of the scenes you anticipate that are going to be really stressful? The whole film's going to be very stressful. <laughs> If he hadn't had such a hard life, yeah. <laughs> I, I you just I find a lot of times when you do it, uh, I mean the script it's so well written. <clears throat> As an actor, you get into a situation where you know when you work, you rehearse with the other actors, and you just keep rehearsing and working and meeting with Ron. That it gets to the point where you're not even acting; you don't even have to act. It just happens, and that's. Uh, I mean, it's, I, I'm not the kind of actor who sits there and I, I psychs himself up. I mean, because I'm, as soon as I decide to do something, I'm, that's all I can think about. For Is there much action in, in the film? Or, you know, top gun audience? There's a lot of physical things that Tom does. Yeah, the, he, he's a wrestling uh, he, he's wrestling, he's playing baseball. Uh, it's a heavy emphasis on sports early in his life. And even when he's in his wheelchair, there's a lot of, he gets involved in a lot of action because that's Ron's nature. He gets involved in demonstrations, he gets involved in politics, in speaking out, in conflicts, in, in bar fights. We have, a, we, have a, we have quite a bit of action. Loretta Smith. Was a friend of Ron's, and uh, she's been working on this documentary for couple of years and uh, essentially she's, she has run out of funds to finish it. You want, you, you want to fill that in, Ron? Uh, yes, about I'll. Loretta's uh, project? She, actually, she just came back from a trip to Central America. Um, she uh, is working now on a documentary about a veteran peace convoy. Do you recall the 
a veteran peace convoy that had a difficult time crossing the border with humanitarian supplies about, uh, gee, I think it was several months ago. Do you remember that? It was down in Texas, wasn't it? Yeah, was it in? Just around here somewhere. In Texas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. El Paso. Right? Yeah. yeah. What did I say? El Paso. El Paso, right. And uh, she's working in her documentaries on the shelf. We really hope that it comes out. And uh, she is now working on uh, another documentary. She's going to continue to work on uh, Born on the Fourth of July. And uh, I'm sure that uh, she will get uh, that documentary out. And I feel it's a very important documentary also. I'm finding that out as I go. It's a, it's a big one. Uh, it's, the war is a part of it. It involves maybe 15 or 20 minutes of the screen time. So, uh, I mean, we're going over a 20, approximately a 20-year span. We're talking about a man's life here, and it's very hard to focus in on any one single aspect of it. We're going to present you all of the facts, and we're going to let you judge what are the turning points in his life. Yes. Yes. Have you gotten a distributor for talk radio? Yes. Yes, it's coming out. Uh, well, it was always Cineplex. Odeon has sub, but it's going to be uh, just sub distributed by uh, Universal Pictures okay. in December. Who are you talking to uh, today now about this film? Universal. I will. Uh, uh, whenever Oliver Stone needs me, or whenever Tom needs me, I'll be there. Um, I live in Los Angeles. I'll be going back tomorrow. I'll be coming back, uh, I think, the 18th and 19th uh, to, uh, to help out. Um, I'm uh, ready to, uh, to work and to help in any way that I can to, uh, to make the best film that we can make. I'm, I'm just I'm there to work. Yeah. Sorry, your question is what you're doing. I'm sorry. Exactly. How important is Ron Daniel in preparation for the film? Can you tell us a little bit about your relationship now? It seems like you've grown together. He's been invaluable to me. I mean, I, he's been very uh, generous. You know, I mean, it's about his life, and I want to portray him accurately. Uh, it was very strange because I was born on the 3rd of July. <laughs> That's what I said to him. And, uh, I mean, he's been invaluable to me. And Tom, is, uh, uh, Tom has been gracious and uh, very sensitive. Um, I, I, um, I feel very calm, and I guess I should feel, uh, I should feel very nervous. But uh, because of Tom Cruise and Oliver Stone and all of the people involved in this project, uh, I feel very good right now. And uh, I feel like I'm working with the finest people. And we're going to do the very best we can. Yes, sir. Question over. Timing gray that creates the deficit. Sure, you have a problem with timing gray because if you've never been allowed to promote to that next step, you can't accumulate any timing gray. But does that account for the full deficit, or are, in your opinion, are the black firefighters being graded more stringently, especially in the... I think they're being graded more stringently, especially in the subjective aspects. Uh, disciplinary action that is taken against a black employee and then written up in your file is not taken against a white employee who undertakes a similar act. And what revenue are you... ...skilled and... Uh, the rules you have to play by in this country are very difficult to make a film by. And they look down on states like Texas that don't allow union I mean, don't, you don't have to be a union to work there. <coughs> they look down. Um, you mean the union <coughs> itself? The, the unions in L.A., I mean? Yeah. Well, the, the unions... money away from them, in a way. Well, I mean, I think uh, most unions have become mostly dinosaurs because they, have, they don't have not grown with the people that are in them. They don't really protect their membership. And don't they a lot of times cause the films to uh, have the inflated budgets? Well, I mean, th that's only part of it. I mean, I think, I think it's a lot more dimension than just that one dimension. Of I've often felt, this is a wacky theory, but I've often felt that a film 
you know, it should be done like as realistic, to, uh, close to life as possible. Like Italians work a lot like this, and, and you're, you see it more in Europe. But for example, certain days you want to get up, you're doing exteriors, you want to shoot in the morning, very early, you want to get the light, you want to get that certain feeling. But you hate the midday sun in Texas because it's flat, and from like 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock, you're dead. There's nothing to do. So why not take a nap, have a long lunch, take it easy, go back to your hotel, sleep, and come back for magic hour. So break the day into two parts. But all the regulations, all the rules will not allow you to do that. You're going to be going in an overtime situation after 12 hours. The Actors Union, I'm not putting Tom down, but SAG <laughs> is like the worst. You know, you can only use an actor for one 12-hour phrase, and then he has to have a 12-hour turnaround. Why? Why can't we be can human beings? No, they can't. They, they want to let him wave. It. But why can't we like work five hours, stop, and then go on? Why do we have to have this rigid framework for movies? It's not real. And it hurts movies. I was in New York. I couldn't even shoot a bum. I couldn't use a bum on the street because I had to hire 125 extras before I could use a real person as an extra. But now he's not that problem here. No, here there's no extras problem. Tom, start to get some closing questions, please. Yeah. Tom, Tom. Yeah. Uh, your movie, Rain Man, will be coming out very soon, your film with Dustin Hoffman. And I remember interviewing Sidney Pollack time the Tootsie came out, and he was talking about how wonderful Dustin is, but how, at the same time, how difficult he is. And I said, would you work with him again? And Sidney Pollack said, not any time. <coughs> so my question to you is, did you find Dustin Hoffman difficult, and would you work with him again? No, I didn't find him difficult. Uh, and you go into, I mean, he was... Uh, I mean, extremely helpful uh, and just, he was unbelievable to work with. Uh, very giving, uh, willing to try anything, and uh, just shared a lot of himself, a lot of his knowledge with me. Uh, and I would work with him, you know, tomorrow. I'd work with him yesterday. I think the situation, and not only that, Sidney Pollack almost did uh, Rain Man. <laughs> I know. I know. So uh, their situation was much different, and uh, I mean, he's just, uh, he's tremendous. I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to work with him. I would like to work with him again. There are reports that uh, for Rain Man, you got $3 million, and that you're doing this film for scale. Is that true? Uh, I, I don't really discuss. This is also a foreign press conference. We have one more question. Yeah. I, I really don't talk about contracts and everything. I mean, everything that goes around a lot of times is, I, I can tell you, uh, uh, not very true. And uh, I just, you know, that's, that's business. That's erroneous. It doesn't matter. I mean, money, you know, compared to you know, what you get, everything is, is you know, it's not why I do a picture. It's not important to me. I tell you, I'm really not concerned with image. Uh, that's kind of something that uh, peop other people create that uh, that I really don't give a lot of thought to uh, in looking for a film, a uh, uh, character that I'm interested in playing. And now that you've done you know, everything from you know, kids stuff movies, you know, Army, all this stuff, what, and, and now something with a, a disability, what's the next kind of movie? Do you have any <laughs> ideas of what you want to do next? I tell you, I, I wish I knew. I really don't know. Uh, it's interesting what Oliver said. You know, sometimes a film picks you, and sometimes you pick the film, and you really don't know where it's going to head. So. No, I haven't read the published book yet, but a lot of books, a lot of movies, there's a, a big difference between them. Is this movie, if someone wants to pick up this book and read it, I'm sure she put a lot of herself into that book. Yeah. And go see the movie. Will there be a... I think it's a good question. I think it's a significant difference in the two. There are several characters that have been added to the movie that are not in the book. And uh, there's, uh, the book is written in more of a poetic, uh, Proustian kind of uh, style, uh, with going back and forth through layers of time, whereas the movie approaches it in a more uh, linear and dramatic direction. I think there's a very good, it's going to make a, I think they both stand up. I hope, they, I hope the movie side stands up. I think they're going to be 
it's good. It's going to be a good case study of how, uh, how a book can turn into a movie. We're not uh, slaves of the book. And I, you know, in some ways, uh, I think the movie is going to be uh, a little more fun than the book and a little more entertaining uh, for movie reasons, too. I think it's going to be a movie and not only a political study. But it's not going to take any truth away from it. No, I don't think so at all. That's why Ron Kovics is working on the screenplay, and uh, he has approved every scene and every line and uh, worked with me on it all the way through. And Oliver's been extremely conscientious about that. Um, he's included me. I feel very, very pleased. Um, I, uh, I trust him very much, and I feel very calm working with him. Um, it's terrific working with him. I'm very, very happy to be here. And the film is going to encompass the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It's going to, it's a, it's, it's a <laughs> Oliver's, and I are finding it's a huge film, uh, and it's really going. You know, uh, you know, Oliver is really going for the reality, what the '50s and '60s and '70s Sputnik and you know, the, the whole time period. You know, when Ron was young, <clears throat> and uh, you know, with, with everything, it is a, you know a film from the gut, and uh, but it's very entertaining. And there's, uh, you know, uh, Kovic's pretty humorous. And the, and the characters around him, actually, you know, Castiglia and all those guys. Could we have one final question? <clears throat> Mr. Stout, when you filmed for Sting, Charlie Sheen was not as well known then as he is now because of the film. And I was wondering if you feel like the image of Tom Cruise will in any way trivialize the serious story of Kevin's life. Uh, good question. <laughs> 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 no, I, no, I uh, obviously I wouldn't do I wouldn't be doing it with Tom if I didn't. I I think that it's for me it's a it's a real challenge because Tom is known. Well, Charlie was not known, so it was you're coming from further in the back. You're a dark horse, and you can surprise people. Here it's a it's an obstacle because Tom is known, so we have to somewhat go against expectations. We have to defeat expectations. We have to rise above them, and we have a few curves and twists that we're gonna we're gonna throw at you, and I think you're gonna see a Tom. You're not going to recognize. I honestly mean that. It's going to be a surprise to some people. I think you're also going to see about three different time periods of Tom, too, uh, which is going to be interesting. Thank you very much Thank for you. coming. Thank you. Thank you. Sit. Thank you. Yeah.